so welcome to another installment of whatever happened to you. In this episode I decided I'd maybe branch out from my doing my typical reviewer ranter retrospective and try something a little different. So you guys know those weird videos of people dressed as Marvel Disney characters? Usually messing around with no dialogue while music plays. Clearly just doing so as a means of raking in views with little to no effort because the system is just broken beyond repair. Today we're going to be talking about a channel that dabbled in a similar format, just with actual quality and craftsmanship behind it. So anyway, let's dive in. It's around 07 or 08, YouTube and Newgrounds were receiving an influx of video game parodies and spoofs. Nowadays you can't go two seconds without running into a parody animation of the latest hit game, but back then we didn't really have many options. When we did find a spoof video, we had to deal with some prepubescent kid wailing into one of the many glorified tin cans on a string that we called Mike's back in the day. Well, that's a bullshit price for a bag of sniper! How do you get my ass out of green like that at the Walmart? Sweet two weapons! Oh shit, that would look so sad, something terrible. Quality animation was uh, few and far in between, with a few exceptions. Like John and Richie, Kerberfer, and a few others. As well as Raptor. Yeah, remember that guy? I actually made animations before deciding to take the easy way out. Now, oh, well, every dog's gotta make his bones somehow, I guess. Especially in this economy. Then you had the live-action video game spoofs. Now those were a whole different animal. I actually have a soft spot for these kinds of videos. I kinda made home movies with my friends back in high school. Thankfully, we all had the good sense not to upload them. One in particular came out around December of 2007, simply known as Stupid Mario Brothers, produced by Richard Altaveras and Chris Muller, founders of RMA Productions. The series revolved around the Mario Brothers and their various adventures in the real world. Aside from that, there wasn't really much plot to the first season, aside from them trying to avoid Wario and Bowser's attempts of dragging them back to the Mushroom Kingdom. The first season's humor was also very hit and miss, so thankfully they didn't rely too much on current internet memes or references that would have just dated the show even further. There are also quite a few musical numbers here and there. Some were lip-synced while others were actually sung by members of the cast. Quite a few of them are pretty good. Just a little bit, one more time, oh won't you stay? What are you doing? I'm, I'm just, just trying to keep myself from becoming bored. Well. If you're going to be doing musical theater, at least you should be doing it properly. It should sound a little bit more like this. Tell them how I am defying gravity. Kiss me goodbye, I'm defying gravity. And you can't bring me down. Whatever, look at this. If God had granted me a son, the summers die one by one. How soon they fly. As the series went on, the plots became more complex, and characters would start to develop outside of their original archetypes. And while no means a Broadway production, you could at least tell that they were trying to make something more than your typical parody. So you had to give them some credit there. And despite the uh, occasional convoluted plot point or cheesy line here and there, it still retained its original flavor. Will you help us? Sure, I said. I was intrigued to figure out what this was all about. We know the whereabouts of Tommy Versetti's mob. At last, Versetti, the man I most anxiously wanted to take down, his whereabouts finally within my grasp. He'll have at least five guards at his place. Can you handle that? They question my skill. To which I laugh and say it'll be easy. <laughs> it'll be easy. The series continued until ending around June 2012, with a whopping five seasons, as well as several spin-offs in a movie. Which is pretty surprising for a show with such little budget. After the main series finished, Alvarez tried to catch lightning in a bottle again. The spin-off series featuring Professor Oak and Brock. Though due to some off-screen tensions between Alvarez and the other members of the cast, caused it to be cancelled only after one episode. At that time, Alvarez's channel slowly began to hemorrhage subscribers due to lengthy gaps in between uploads. That and the climate of YouTube was beginning to change into what it is now. Instead of YouTube being a way of entertaining people, it's 
slowly become a means of making money. The rise of reaction channels and false flags, bigger channels monopolizing viewerships, and the unnatural obsession with petty e-drama. YouTube had changed, and many people just weren't able to keep up with it. Oliver is almost being one of them himself. So in order to keep up with the times, he'd make more contemporary videos, like commentaries and vlogs, as well as a few gimmick videos here and there. Then one year later he kicked it up a notch by releasing a direct sequel to the Stupid Mario Bros. series. So ten years after the events of Stupid Mario Bros., Plumber Knight featured a more heavy plot and darker undertones, similar to the Chris Nolan Batman movies. Though many fans enjoyed it, few fans criticized the melodrama. Hello, old friend. Commenting on my age? No. Just been a long time. It's good to see you. How did you know I was here? <laughs> I may be older, but I'm still psychic. Altavares then decided to give his fans more of what they originally wanted. So it is more of a direct sequel, Stupid Mario World continued the adventures of Mario and Luigi throughout the real world. The same style that fans have grown to love. Although considered a success, many of the fans complain about the short runtime being used as a means to milk money from Patreon. As of now, Rich is still doing pretty well. He's continuing to make the same mix of contemporary YouTube videos as well as his Stupid Mario World series. Seems that the lack of subscribers hasn't dampened his spirit. So that was Rich Alvarez. Though YouTube has changed over the years, it's good to see quality content still managing to thrive. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later. For all the new friends we met, it was great seeing you there, and for those of you who couldn't make it, we hope to see you next year. Yeah, and I got this really cool Pac-Man hat.